Uh, so the G1000 was an, uh, a very large experiment in deliberative democracy where we gathered a uh, thousand Belgians uh, different people um, together in one day to discuss three topics and um, that they selected beforehand. So it were the uh, people who selected the topics and then we brought them together. What was important is what we had a very clear uh, methodology that we followed. So uh, the beginning was the selection of the teams, of course. It went through a very clear methodology. It was online and, and in several rounds to get the best ideas up. And then the second thing was um, how to get the people there. In fact, they were randomly chosen between all Belgians. And so uh, each one had a phone call to ask if they wanted to spend a free day of their holiday uh, for democracy. Mm -hmm. um, the importance is that the group was diverse, um, so that we had young people, old people, people with different backgrounds, people with different social statuses. So that's um, the main uh, part of the, of the methodology that we brought together, uh, diverse people. And then we put them on tables and each table had also um, someone, a facilitator, who was leading uh, the discussions. Before introducing each topic, we had some experts explaining the facts and figures so that everybody uh, had some knowledge about the topic to discuss. And at the end of the day, there were resolutions that were written by all these people and on some ideas for the government to say, OK, this is our solution for a problem. Um, the strength of this methodology is that you have the difference of the people listening to each other and and changing their minds by hearing the other one that normally you never hear or you never see because people tend to stay in their own groups but by being exposed to other groups and other thoughts we had very very interesting discussions and people are going to have another view of the same problem and so they come to a consensus and to really uh, interesting thoughts um, our aim was to prove that, so that if you put people together, uh, different people together, that you have reasonable ideas coming up. And the second thing that we wanted to prove was is this uh, deliberative democracy was not against representative democracy, but could be complementary to it. The topics uh, were chosen by the people themselves uh, via online. So we first asked them, uh, what would you like to talk about? And then we had a lot of, lot of reactions. And then in the second round, um, we sent emails out and we let them rate again all the other topics that were entered. And so we came to the top, top three of, uh, of topics. The topics were decided by the public, by a large public. We did a kind of online survey where we asked what would you like to talk about and then we got lots and lots of ideas and then in the second round we relaunched the ideas and we asked that people to rate them and to give stars the best ideas and so on and that we did during a whole period and uh, this is the way the tr top three uh, came up uh, chosen by the people. And the topics were uh, migration, um, redistribution of wealth in times of crisis, and social security. We focused on uh, offline in the first place to put a thousand people together, but we also had the experiment um, online. I think, um, so I, I cannot say from that day on what is, what is the best, but afterwards in my career, I think that mixing both and having a hybrid model um, it's the best solution because today you never get online the physical interaction between people and the, the, the fact of meeting each other, looking in each other's eyes and saying straight to someone else with some other ideas what you think is very hard but is also very brave and listen to someone else is the same. To reproduce that online it's hard or difficult because you are more anonymous and you can say what you want. So the confrontation of ideas and this deliberation process. The best way is offline, but I think to do it offline and then to go online together and then again offline, then you can scale up the, the, the process and you have both of both, both, both worlds. The main barrier is um, in the beginning is recruiting. Um, how do you keep uh, people, uh, how do you 
keep it that interesting that they want to come and to contribute because you, you and we can think that uh, deliberative uh, democracy and participative democracy is interesting but in fact you need the brave ones who say yes to come in the process but once they see what the goal is and what is done with their inputs and they see that it has results you can have more enthusiastic people afterwards so it's also a process that has to grow um, you have to be patient in this kind of processes too uh, so that's one barrier um, another barrier is um, recruiting uh, the right people uh, people tend to to have uh, extreme ideas and to come to defend their extreme ideas and how do you get the other ones on the table or for example the groups that are more difficult to recruit like um, people uh, who live in poverty or other kind of, of people so uh, or younger people sometimes you really have to do an effort uh, with groups that they are already been representing how to to, to drag them to the table um, so you have to be aware of that one in recruitment that you don't only have the enthusiastic people and so therefore um, we tried with the G1000 lottery, so we really picked people, people up. This is a very good idea and it was for once. If you want to do this steadily, and I know that um, in some other countries they do, they start thinking also of um, should we pay these people for the effort. Mm -hmm. If they put time and effort uh, in this, why not thinking of, of a kind of, of that one. Um, the other uh, difficulty of problem is um, you don't um, change democracy overnight. So you have to know that it is a, a long uh, project, a long project, and uh, that it's normal that not everybody is cheering up and agreeing what is going on today. Uh, you have to be aware of that. Um, but it will go uh, gradually and, and you also have to think of the other side. If you have power and you are mandated to, to be in charge, um, it's a different set of minds to think now I have to ask the people. So um, beware of that process and that we have a democracy now for a long time and that uh, change always is a long process. Um, but it's gradually by doing it, that you will will end up there and the world has changed so much and people can raise their voices through social media and others that it's not going away so you have to include it but give it time i've been here uh, since yesterday and uh, i see a lot of uh, wonderful people who are really uh, willing uh, to change and to have the experiments in place and and, and are doing it um, as I always say, it's a learning process. It's um, trial and error, and that's what I see here too. And it's normal. So don't think uh, we don't succeed from the first time. It's normal, it's normal. So you have this great website where people can put their ideas and have discussions. And what I heard these days is how can we improve it? What do we need? Maybe the next thing is deliberation. How can we let them interact? Or maybe to go offline and online and the ideas of the hybrid model. So, but I see here that there are a lot of uh, great motivated people, but that uh, we can learn from each other. We can learn from you, you can learn from us, we can learn from all their, we are not the only ones. Um, I see it in quite a lot of countries happening, these kinds of trials and ideas, but know that um, it's going not so fast as you want and that uh, it's not so easy as you thought. And if you keep that in mind, you will succeed.